Hello and welcome to the Full Body Fix Coaching Show. We have a great uh, presentation, conversation, I would really be best called, uh, coming up here. And I really want to especially give a warm welcome to our VIPs who are in attendance today. Lots of love to you. It's always wonderful to connect with you in meetings. And today we're talking about something that is the root or the foundation to your immune system. And this is an area of the body that most health scientists actually consider outside of the body. Interestingly enough, I think most people probably aren't aware of this system actually be, being considered outside of the body. And this system is the, of course, digestive system. So we're going to be talking about the digestive system, how to make that system in your body run the very best that it can. And I have a very special guest here with me today to help me run this show. And, you know, the way that we're going to run this show is Udo and I, which you're going to learn about who is Udo here in a moment, but he and I will have a conversation. I'll be purposefully asking certain questions that create better clarity for you, the audience member, and also enable you to have a better a useful, more applicable experience from the knowledge you're gaining. But also please feel free to throughout the show to send in messages. Um, if you want more clarification on certain things, I can't promise you that we'll get to every question during the show, um, but I will try to address a lot of those so that we can best connect and make the best experience for you. At the end of our roughly 30 to 40 minute conversation, we will then be transitioning to a Q&A where you get to connect with us live on Zoom, ask your questions and or also write in the chat to learn. And of course, if you're a VIP, you have a front row seat. So you get first dibs, first access to asking questions to our world class expert here today, which is Udo Erasmus. Now I will read Udo's intro to you. Uh, Udo is the legendary Udo Erasmus. He's the co-founder of Udo's Choice line, which can be found in Whole Foods and other health food stores worldwide. Udo designed the machinery for making oils with health in mind and pioneered flax oil, a billion dollar industry. However, Udo walked a difficult path to become the man he is today. Being a child of war, Udo's life began with intense struggle. As an adult, he got pesticide poisoning in 1980, leaving doctors at a loss regarding treatment. And that's where he really started to develop a lot of these amazing things that he develops in his health line, uh, including his Udo's uh, Omega Choice Oils, the three, six, and nines. I'm sure you've all heard about them. And also what we're going to be talking about today, with the, which is digestive health. So deciding to take his health into his own hands, Udo began researching and his discoveries led him to a passion for finding the answers to life's big questions, which would hopefully one day bring him and the world peace. Today, Udo is an acclaimed speaker and author of many books, including the best-selling Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, which has sold over 250,000 copies. He teaches at events hosted by Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra, has keynoted an international brain health conference, and has traveled to over 30 countries to conduct thousands of live presentations. So I would say you're in very good hands today, and we're going to have an amazing show that is uh, knowledge and wisdom packed. Uh, media, media interviewers and staff trainings impacting more than 225 million lives with his messages on oils, health, peace, nature, and human nature. Udo has extensive education in biochemistry, genetics, biology, and nutrition, including a master's degree in counseling psychology. And before I bring him on, one really interesting comment that came up during our meeting together in preparation for this show, which is love is more important than vegetables. So I'll leave that thought with you as I welcome him. And that probably means a lot to a lot of you guys, especially when we get into the whole like, should you eat meat or should you go vegetarian, which is not necessarily what this show is about. And we will, of course, cover some of those topics. But love is more important 
than vegetables. Udo, welcome to the show, my friend. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me on. This is going to be fun. Awesome. So Udo, share with us first, what would you say, why, why is digestive health so important and how is that really the root or the foundation okay. to the immune system? Let's yeah. start. So, so I'm a biology major. So you look at nature and I found out not that long ago, there is a, there's a jellyfish that's been around for 500 million years. So it's obviously very successful at surviving. And that jellyfish has no brain at all, but it has a really good digestive system. And, that, and the reason I make the point, we pride ourselves in how smart we are. And you know, the brain's a cool, it's a cool invention. But digestion is more important than brain. And in fact, the entire body came through your digestive system. Every your earlobes and your eyebrows and the hair that I don't I, that I have, but some people don't have. And, uh, you know, your your biceps and your triceps and your skin and your toenails and your, you know, everything went through your stomach. In the foods that you ate that then were completely broken down into their essential into their nutrients and the essential nutrients that then you absorbed and then reconstituted into what makes you same building blocks for every creature. So, uh, you know, they say the, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Actually, the way to everything is through the stomach. <laughs> so that so so and it's the hardest working part of the body. And let me just say it one other way. You know, what, what keeps you alive is solar energy, solar energy called life, called the master, whatever you want to call that. We have all of that in common. But if any of your tissues were injected into somebody else, that's even your brothers and sisters, everybody except identical twins, or some, some tissue from a plant was injected into your body or a tissue from some animal, you would have an immune reaction because it's foreign tissue, it's enemy tissue, and then you would develop antibodies against it. And then if, this, if it happened a second time, you could actually die of anaphylactic shock. So you, you, on the one hand, you live united by light, but in the midst of enemies. And the, and the immune system is, keeps you safe by taking down everything that comes at you that is foreign. But the digestive system has even a more important job to do because it has to break down all this foreign tissue that you eat as food, have to completely break it down, especially the proteins into the building blocks because the building blocks we have in common and the proteins we don't. And so you break it all down into building blocks, you in, digest the building blocks, and then by life puts it together in, in your form, according to your genetic program. This is like, when you think about it, it's like, it's massive. It's massive and it's really super, super interesting how it's all put together. I had, I had religious experiences studying biology, literally. I was just in awe of how things are put together in nature. And uh, the digestive system is, you know, is the, you know, a chicken, you know, if you eat chicken, you could become a chicken, if it weren't for digestion. But digestion breaks down the chicken, and then you absorb the, the, the amino acids, and then they're put together into the proteins that are, that are unique to you. If that didn't happen, you would, uh, <laughs> you would be very short lived. And this is why, and this is exactly why the digestive system is considered outside of the body, because we're taking foodstuffs from outside the body, breaking them down, absorbing them, um, breaking them down into their individual parts, and then reassimilating them into structures on your body. So when right. those structures or certain food stuffs for different individuals can have an allergic effect, and this 
uh, your immune system gets very busy and very involved with. And this is one of the things that creates a lot of inflammation for a lot of people. And sometimes it's rare foods that different, different um, food types cause issues for different people. And then there are certain food types that are very commonly caused issues for the majority of us, such as excessive sugar, uh, excessive wrong types of fats, right? Oils that are cooked and this type of thing, which uh, we also had an amazing show on fats and oils. Uh, Patricia can share the link for that with us here at the end of this show. She'll share the link with you. Uh, we don't want you to get distracted. So, uh, and that's that's really amazing, Ludo, how, how yeah. the digestive system is outside the body and how it protects yeah. us. And one of the big things that we are talking about in our private meeting was, that you know if you're if you're eating foods that cause a reaction to your immune system it's like a battle for your immune system and if it's battling inside the digestive system and what the digestive system is allowing to come in then it has less forces to battle other fights such as a cold a flu a coronavirus whatever it might be and so it is so important to optimize your digestive system. And then the other thing that happens right. for so many people is they get like inflammatory effects in their immune system, in their digestive system, uh, such as leaky gut, IBS, and these other issues that are both compounded by mental and physiological issues. So let's go on to and talk about what are the ideal for a digestive health what yeah. are the things we really want to keep in check? I know you have some, a list of like, all right, here's the things that are super important that your digestive system needs to be optimized. So let's talk about the, let's first talk about the bad list, right? So what is the bad list that we really want to try to control? And then let's talk about the good list. Well, the bad list includes undigested proteins. Because if you get an undigested protein in your body, that's foreign tissue, and that alerts the immune system, and then it, the immune system creates inflammation and then takes down the, the protein. And if you're not digesting your proteins properly, then the immune system ends up getting so involved in the, in the digestion, digestive system, because there's so much foreign stuff there, that it doesn't that it limits its capacity to do the other jobs that it's supposed to be doing in the body. So that's the first one. And then the rest of them is any molecule that is foreign to biology or foreign to your biology. So any of you, so I'm talking about, you can be allergic to pesticides. Uh, in fact, a lot of people think that when people have allergy to wheat, which is very common, that allergy may actually be their reaction to glyphosate and not to the protein, not to the wheat protein. Don't know if that's proved yet, but uh, certainly glyphosate is a foreign molecule and wreaks havoc in your digestive system. It actually wrecks your microbiome. Uh, it, it used to be used as an antibiotic before it was used as a pesticide. But any plastics, pharmaceutical drugs, that's why they have side effects. Um, plastics, pesticides, pharmaceutical drugs, industrial chemicals, synthetic flavors and coloring compounds. I mean, literally anything we've made that never existed in nature can be a problem and can alert the immune system to create inflammation in order to try and take it down. And some of these foreign molecules are particularly insidious because they never existed in nature. So life never made a program to take them down. So they tend to accumulate in the body and the body's very slow to get rid of them. So there's a ton of those. And the idea of course, is if you wanna be healthy, you need to live in line with nature and your nature. So be fresh, whole, raw, organic, local. Uh, and probably for most of human history, mostly plant-based. That would have been how it was in nature when we lived subsistence and only had rocks to hunt with, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. 
Absolutely. And, and like I like to say, the best the best diet is a raw diet, right? Overall, a raw diet. One thing I recommend is a plant-based diet, just add enough protein, right? A plant-based diet, just add enough protein is really the best path. So Udo, share with us, right? Because there's, you know, we all hear a lot about probiotics and prebiotics. So first of all, what's the difference between probiotic, prebiotic? Okay. And, you yeah. know, are the are probiotics <laughs> good? Do we actually need them? Should we get them yeah. from pills? Should we get them from food? You know, straighten us out a bit there. Okay. So probiotics are bacteria. And I look at bacteria, first of all, 10% of the biomass on the planet is bacteria, the microorganisms. 10%. And human biomass of all of the people, 8 billion people to altogether is 0.1%. So there is 100 times more bacterial biomass on, the, on this planet than there is human biomass. So if you think that you can kill all the bacteria and make yourself safe from infections that way, that's probably not going to happen ever, right? So I look at bacteria as three different ways. One is rot bacteria, which are everywhere. They're in the water, they're in the soil, they're in the air. And their job is to take anything that dies and recycle the material. So those are the rot bacteria. They are supposed to recycle it, but after you die. How do you keep it from doing that before you die? Well, there are also bacteria that will make you sick because they'd love to live inside your, your digestive tract, tract where it's warm and it's lots of food, but they would make you sick if they got to live there. So you need protection from those as well. And then the third one is the probiotics, the friendly bacteria that protect you from the rot and the sick bacteria, sick making bacteria. So that's the way I look at it. And the probiotics, the ones that are best known and most studied are the lactobacilli and the bifidobacteria. You find those in fermented foods. You find them in the top layer of the soil in nature where leaves and biological material ferments before it turns back into soil again. And when a plant in nature pushes through that layer, the soil bacteria, which contain the rot bacteria, those are stripped back and stay in the soil. And the plant picks up the probiotics in that top fermenting layer. So if you were running around naked in nature and just eating fresh things, just like from hand to mouth, you would be getting probiotics in your mouth with every mouthful of food, just like the cows do in the meadow. And if you ever, go in a meadow on a farm where the cows are eating grass and you smell their breath, their breath smells a little bit like yogurt. And that's because they ferment the grass and they, um, you know, they smell, they make the breath smell good because it's not rot bacteria in there, but it's probiotics. And I actually brush my teeth with probiotics before I go to bed at night given that they're supposed to start in your mouth and not just be swallowed as a pill. And when I wake up in the morning, I have exponentially less severe bad breath when I do that. And that's the only thing I've ever found, not mouthwash and not, you know, not, uh, you know, all the, all the stuff that we do, not tongue scraping and all of that, because the probiotics, when they're in your mouth and you fall asleep, you don't swallow, they multiply and they outpopulate the rot bacteria, they inhibit their growth and they steal their food. And when you're sleeping, you don't swallow. So they just pile up in your mouth. So whatever you got in there. So I, I like to have probiotics in there because it makes a huge difference to morning bad breath. So, so optimizing uh, the right mycoflora in your mouth, which of course yeah. is the start of the digestive system and then going down into your gut. So you brush yeah, your and teeth. It, and in nature, they normally? always start it in your mouth. Sorry. Do you brush your teeth normally first and then go to yeah, probiotics? Yeah. Or? yeah, yeah, I do. I brush, I do all the usual stuff, brush my teeth and pick them and, you know, do all that stuff. And then I, and then I open a capsule on, on my tongue and literally brush it everywhere, try to get it into all the pockets and between the teeth so that I literally have probiotics everywhere in my mouth. 
And then I swallow them. I don't rinse them because I want to keep them there. And then I go to bed. It's quite, uh, it's quite uh, uh, remarkable how much better your breath is when you do it properly. So, um, so we have a question here in the chat. Can probiotics or supplement, probiotic supplements cause your bowels to become irritable? In other words, to cause inflammation and yeah, yeah. issues. Can you actually yeah, yeah. cause problems with probiotics? Short-term, possibly long-term, no. And I'm saying that because whenever you make a change in your diet, I, I used to work with animals and they, the veterinarian, when it would shift from one kind of dog food to another kind of dog food, they would always have to take a couple of weeks to taper one down and to taper the other one in. Because if they did it from, day, from one day to another, the dog would get diarrhea because the system gets used to something. So when you make a change in that system, you got to give it time to adjust. But, but probiotics don't, don't cause inflammation. They're your protectors. And they even protect you from inflammation. So uh, that's why I say yes, in the short term, possibly, but no, not in the long term. And another great VIP question is, is there a preferred probiotic capsule or, or if we're, what is the ideal? Let's answer that. But let's also answer. Uh, let me add some more structure. Like if I want to opt if everyone wants to, that's why they're here, optimize their probiotics and really mm -hmm. optimize that microflora. What should we ultimately be eating? Is there, is there a supplement? Is there a type of foods? Uh, share that with us. Okay. Fermented foods are the traditional source of probiotics before we isolated them and concentrated them and grew them in tanks and, and, made, uh, and made products out of, like caps, capsule products out of them. So, so fermented foods, and literally going around the world, there are, every vegetable can be fermented. I mean, I I've, I've do it sometimes myself. And uh, I've fermented everything that's in, every vegetable in my fridge. But there are also people who ferment meat. They actually bury rabbits in, uh, in the north in the north country they bury them and let them ferment they ferment fish in sweden i ate fermented fish they stunk like crazy but once you got the skin off and threw that out they they would leave with the windows open 40 below to get a draft through there that's how bad they smell but then you take it off and the meat tastes fermented and they actually tastes really good and it's actually really good for you so they do it with fish and then of course milk was fermented uh uh, yogurt, kumis in, in Russia, um, even eggs were fermented. So there's all kinds, just about anything can be fermented. And so uh, that was the traditional source. What we do now, because we're not so much into that anymore, uh, we get put them in capsules. And what they've figured out is that they work better in teams than alone. So not single strains, but blends of different strains because they have different talents. But you need more as you grow. So, so infants need the least. And as you grow, you need more for optimum benefits, but also the type, the types that make the best blend change as you age. So we work, knowing that we basically work with uh, in uh, probiotics for infants or toddlers, for children, for adults, and for seniors or advanced adults. And we literally have different probiotics blends for them. And then they're also condition specific. As you get older, you need more bifidobacteria, the one I brush my teeth with because I'm 81. You know, when as you get older, you, the bifidobacteria that are most populous in your colon, they start to disappear. And so they need to be replaced. So I brush my teeth with them. And if I had to pick one probiotic from the whole bunch, bifidobacteria would be the one. They're a little harder to grow. They're a little more sensitive. You keep them refrigerated. I never buy uh, probiotics that are not in the fridge. And uh, 
And again, you brush your teeth with them and then they find their way through the entire digestive tract. They also are, there's also a difference between human adapted probiotics, which can stand strong acid and bile and survive them, as opposed to dairy based bacteria, which are pretty sensitive to being damaged by stomach acid and bile, because dairy has low stomach acid and weak bile, because they have a different diet than we do. And then you want, the, there are probiotics that implant in the lining of your digestive tract, and they stick around for 10 to 14 days and getting eating and multiplying, getting you continuous benefits for all that time. Whereas there are transient probiotics, which if you put them in your mouth, you, they go through your, through your body in one pass, they don't implant, and they're, they're out of your body within a day or two or however long your, your bowel transit time is. So there are, there are a number of issues. So what we do, we work with human adapted implanting. Uh, they're grown on, on uh, chickpea medium because quite a few people have allergies to the dairy. So uh, chickpea is a better medium to grow them on for at least those people. And then we have them age and condition specific. So if you, the, if, the, if you have worse, serious problems in your digestive tract, the bifidobacteria are the ones to emphasize. Uh, and then we have, have one that is a lozenge that you dissolve in your mouth instead of eating dessert. And uh, that, that makes the point that you're supposed to start them in your mouth. Best time to take them is after your meals when your stomach acid is lowest, except for the human adapted, it doesn't really make that much difference because they're pretty hardy. So I think that covers most of the, most of the issues to look at. Um, the ones I use, uh, they're in, in glass bottles in the fridge. The company that makes them is called Flora and they've got seven of them. Um, uh, three of them are condition specific and and four of them are age specific. And so you basically they, buy depending, you know what your situation is and, and who you're buying them for. So you get to decide and it's pretty clear from the, from the label what you need to do. There's one called Super 8. There's eight different strains in it. And that one is, I, I like it for travelers, but it's also a good one for, um, uh, for vaginal use. And you actually swallow it, but it finds its way to the birth canal. Now there's research on that. I, I when I first heard that, I said, "No, is that really true?" Uh, but no, they, there's been research that shows that when you eat them, you think it would they end up in the toilet, but they actually find their way to the birth canal. So that one's called Super Eight. That's one of the condition specifics. So, so a few a few things here. We I think we should create clarity for the difference between prebiotics right yeah. which is primarily fiber and the food for probiotics and right. probiotics are the microorganisms the good bugs that your body needs correct and then uh, most people i'm sure i can speak for most people um having done nutrition with people for a long time uh, they feel ick with many things and so one thing is to have the plan and another is like what plan can you get people to follow right so it has to have a perfect marriage between the ultimate plan and the ultimate followability. So um, I'm sure that most people in this session, including my wife, I'm sure are not going to eat like spoiled fish, right? So, <laughs> so, so what? So, so like, is there any foods that are like, this is really important that you, you should try to eat this fermented food. And, and then the question becomes, well, do you just let it spoil or like, what is the fermentation process, right? So we need to create clarity there. You know, yeah. are there any foods that are fermented that most people would probably eat that are really good for you? So let's just start with that one and then I'll carry us through the next questions. So let's start Okay, with probably that. the best fermented food. Well, okay, probably the best known fermented food is sauerkraut. But it has to be sauerkraut done the traditional way. So you can do it. We used to make it ourselves in, in big pots, like big, big pots. And what we do is we take cabbage and, and uh, smash it down into 
well, cut it, I guess, cut it and then smash it down. So it was under its under juice, under its own juice. Then we put, would put some salt on top of it to keep it from rotting. And then we put a board on it and a rock on the board. So it was always underwater. And then we would just let it sit for six weeks. And the, the probiotics that make the sauerkraut are already in the, in the cabbage when it's growing. And so then after six weeks, we take off the top layer where the salt was and the rest of it was sauerkraut. Took about six weeks at at normal temperature but you can do that with carrots and i've done it with radishes they kind of stink like the radishes they, they smell pretty strong um i think it's sulfur the sulfur in the in the carrots in so the, what in about the radishes a, what about That's, a store bought what about a store but i mean i'm sure there's some people that will do this stuff but uh, yeah mo most won't so what is there is there like a store bought version of these fermented? You, you can get store bought. They should be in glass. Uh, and you should be able to see fermented with living bacteria or fermented with probiotics, or they might give you the name of the probiotics on them. Uh, and you'd find those mostly in more nature based stores. Yeah. So, um, okay. So the next, so the next yeah. question before we go to, um, and it actually would be great. I don't know if you had like a list, maybe you could give that list to Patricia. And then when we provide the, the show replay, we could actually put what were the list of those fermented foods that are looked good to look for in the grocery store. Um, oh, yeah. So maybe you could, um, we could take a note on that, Patricia. And then, okay. um, so next item before we go to probiotics is the next question is going to be like, okay, please share with us specifically like what probiotics should people buy that they're truly proven heavily to be beneficial in quality? But before we yeah. get there, yeah. difference between prebiotic and what really is a probiotic? I was just going to go there. Yeah, prebiotic, prebiotic, they're called prebiotic. That's kind of a, a uh, it's kind of a marketing name. They used to be called ballast or fiber. And fiber is carbohydrates that the body can't digest, that our body can't digest, but it's great food for, for the friendly bacteria. And there are two kinds, there are lots of fancy chemical names, so I won't go into them, but the two kinds, uh, basically uh, water soluble and water insoluble. Water insoluble, you get on wheat, and it just like, it's very good for cleaning your digest your villi and your digestive tract and they form bulk so you get better bowel regularity from them and the the soluble water soluble ones also sometimes called mucilage fiber like you get on flax when you put flax in water or chia seed or psyllium those are slimy kind of slimy they're the best food for probiotics but they also really good for stabilizing blood sugar because they slow down the absorption of sugar from the digestive tract. And they also prevent cholesterol or bile acids from being reabsorbed into the body. Uh, so they help you lower those if your cholesterol is high. Because if you don't have enough fiber in your diet, your body will reabsorb up to 94% of the cholesterol that your liver dumps, your gallbladder dumps into your digestive tract. And then it doesn't get out of the body. The body can make cholesterol because that has important functions, but it can't break it down. Some, some probiotics can break it down, but the human body can't break it down. So that means the only way to lower cholesterol when you make it and stress increases its production is that you actually, it ends up in the toilet and we can't break it down and fiber uh, make sure that that happens so that it's not reabsorbed. So prebiotics, basically different kinds of fiber. Between the two, if I had to make a choice, I would use the mucilage fiber because uh, it, it, all, all things, all told, it just seems to be the, the, the more important one of the two. That's prebiotics. And then um, probiotics. What, what exactly? Well, probiotics are living bacteria that are friendly, that have health benefits if you take them in the right amounts. 
and in, and in the right intervals. I take them every day. And literally, you know, when we were running around naked in nature, everything we ate from hand to mouth had probiotics on it. When we cook our foods, we kill the probiotics. They should be replaced because they're really important for health. So more cooked food you eat, more you make got need to make sure that you replace them from a health perspective. And what would be like, is there one all encompassing supplement? Is there two or three? What? Well, the, what should... Okay. The one I take, um, the one I take uh, is called super bifido plus. It's got 102 billion living organisms in it. So it's a high dose. Uh, that's the one I use consistently. Also happens to be the best tasting, which is why I brush my teeth with it, because not all probiotics taste that good. And yet the best way to get the probiotics is to start them in your mouth. So that's another reason why, uh, why I use the super bifid or the high dose one. And also because of my advanced age. <laughs> right. So would super bifido plus be enough? Or if there's someone who's taking this, is or are we missing some things? For me, yeah. The other one, it depends on the age. Uh, you know, if and uh, most of your clients would be adult or advanced adult, I would guess. All over the age of fifty. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they'd be pretty much all doing super bifido. Uh, sorry, they'd all be doing advanced adult. But if they have kids and grandkids, then they can get them age specific if they want to help. Now, another thing that I think is helpful to, you know, when you take antibiotics, you know, oral antibiotics, they kill the unfriendly bacteria, but they also kill the friendly ones. And so what we recommend to do is you, if you're going to take antibiotics, take probiotics too, and take them before you start the antibiotics and take them every day while you're doing the antibiotics. And then you take them after and you don't leave a break in between, even though they get killed. It's when you go off your antibiotics, then what happens is you tend to leave a window for reinfection and you don't want to make that possible. That's why you want them there all the time so that they can, they can basically be the ones that stay alive when, you, when your antibiotic wears off. Very, I mean, very useful because there are a lot of people who after one, maybe a two week or three week or four week course of antibiotics screwed up their, their digestive system microbiome and, and sometimes have problems for years. So if to keep that from happening, you want to take probiotics before, during and after any antibiotic treatments. Yeah, that's a great tip. I think a significant percentage of people don't realize is anytime you take antibiotic, so important to take those probiotics, both before, yeah. during, and after. Yeah, very, very important. Yeah. And when you live in when we live in cities, you know, we're not as close to probiotics in any natural way as we would be if we if we were running around in nature. So we so we have that's that stroke against us already. And then the antibiotics make it even worse. Udo, let's transition now to yep. Q and A. So, yep. um, and uh, feel free, VIPs. So we will call on everybody, um, but VIPs, you have first dibs. So if you're a part of the VIP family, please, uh, and you have questions and you want to participate with us here, please go ahead and raise your hand. And of course, you know exactly how to raise your hand on Zoom, VIPs. And uh, we will call on everybody. And then any VIPs that I, I don't really want to get on Zoom today uh, and on the stage, you can always write to me directly or you can post everyone or just send the question directly to me and I'll make sure it gets, uh, it gets asked here. And we'll call on you in the order of which you raise your hand. And I want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable, that you're welcome to participate with us and ask questions here. And first up, we have... Teresa Duran, hello and welcome to you. Our, our very special VIP. Hi, Teresa. 
<laughs> you're not you're not unmuted yet. Let me send you a little link there. Got it. There we go. Hello. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for this priceless, priceless presentation. Um, a quick, I'll get right to it. I went to see um, somebody and they did a little, I don't know what it's called, something where they, you hold on to some kind of bar and they're reading some stuff that's going on in your body. And he said, oh, you've got all these, for lack of a better word, it was like um, t worms, worms that weren't Par friendly. Parasites. Parasites, right. And so he, you know, I, I purchased a little bottle, I bring it home. Um, and and then it's like, well, okay, so I have this great plum tree outside. And and there's and the the I have friends who would rather pick the plums off the ground. Um, and it's like, oh well, okay, so the parasites, the you know, the dirt, it's better, you know, like where is this happy medium? I, I, I'm not sure there is a happy medium. It's probably better. Plums don't usually get worms in them, uh, unlike apples. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably better to pick them than to pick them off the tree than off the ground. Uh, but even on the ground, if it's, if it's in nature, it looks like you're a little bit close to nature, uh, you probably have don't have a polluted ground the way you might have in the city or you know in in like in dirtier places or in more in less natural places and the and parasites could be microorganisms but parasites could also be uh, uh, all kinds of different uh, more complex organisms i think the the one of the best treatments for these parasites if you actually have them is ivermectin. Ivermectin has been used for many decades in Africa for all kinds of uh, parasites. And it has a really good track record, even won a Nobel Prize. But there are other parasite treatments. Some of them are bitters. We haven't talked about enzymes and bitters, which are also part of the digestive, uh, the digestive story, helping digestion. And uh, some people use uh, diatomaceous earth, which has silicon uh, skeletons, and they literally shred the parasites. Like if you have Ascaris worms, for instance, or, or uh, what are they called? Tapeworms. Diatomaceous earth, you take it you, for two weeks, and you take it every day in, in uh, prescribed doses. And it shreds the parasites and kills them that way. So there's a number of different ways that you can do that. And it depends on where you've been and what you might have picked up that may have something, some bearing on it as well. So there's some things you can do without having to know all of that. And there's some things that are more specific. Um, if, so, if, so a probiotic and a, and a prebiotic is not going to touch that stuff. Well, it depends on what kind of a parasite it is. But if, if it's a tapeworm, uh, I'm not familiar with any information that says that probiotics will get rid of tapeworms. You know, ivermectin, I think, poisoned them. Ivermectin is a kind of a natural product, too. It came from, from so, there, so there are some probiotics that, that might do something for some of the parasites. But that's a, that's a very, very foggy field at this point. Okay. And there's and there's that like that dog for worms. It's the in a yellow box. And I think you can I, take I know they're for dogs, but people take them too. Yeah, I well, I don't know if I don't know what it what it is. I'd have to know the name and even then I might not know. I I have it on the counter. I just didn't see it right now. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for answering my question. Yeah, as vague as as vague as the answer is. <laughs> Lots of love to you, Teresa. And um, next up, we have Sunita. Hello, Sunita. Welcome. 
Good to see you. Let's see here. Um, give you a, a link to unmute yeah, them. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Hi. I'm a fan. I've been taking Udo's oil for a long time, so it was really nice to be able to hear your talk. My question is, I make a lot of fermented food. I do vegetables and all, but I wanted to know if you think the drinks like kombucha, water kefir, milk kefir, are they as beneficial? I do make them because I enjoy them, but will they be beneficial too? Yeah, kefir, kefir is, a, is a fermented drink, obviously. Kombucha too. Uh, kombucha is, ma is made by a fungus. Yeah, I make uh, three. I've been doing that for about 10 years now. So I make kombucha, I make water kefir yeah. and milk kefir. So do you yeah. think those are as good as having fermented vegetables? Well, it depends on what the organisms are. Okay. Uh, and and uh, me personally, I don't do it. I don't do well with kombucha, so I don't use it. But there I know that there are people who've gotten really good results with it. Yeah, I think it oh. has really helped my gut tissues. Uh, long yeah. back, I had a very, uh, you know, easily upset gut. And yeah. that's why I started all these things. And it has really helped me. And, uh, you know, so I now I like the taste. So I just continue it. I'm not completely yeah. sure how good it is for us. But uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, if, if it's working, I mean, you if, if it's making you feel better, that's a good sign. Yeah, okay. And, and but the way I would answer the question, if I was in your shoes, I would I would do what I'm doing, and I would try some other things, right? Like the super bifido plus, and see if it gets you any any other benefits. All right. And if it doesn't, then don't you don't use it. All right. And if it, and if it does, you know, and then then you can switch it out. You can see whether whether it does a better job if you use it, but not the others. Right. or one of the others or both together and it so you can literally do the experiment and just pay attention to what your body tells you yeah i'll do right. i'll do something like a good trial and look thank you so much yeah yeah you're welcome lots of love to you sunita thank you for your question so um, we have from the chat where can i find more information on fermented proteins like fermented eggs and before you answer that udo i just want to again invite everyone in audience here you're totally welcome to raise your zoom hand if you're not familiar how to on how to do that you can go to reactions on the bottom of the zoom toolbar it looks like a little smiley face with the plus sign on the head if you click that a box opens and then you can click raise hand and then your digital hand will raise. And Zoom also has a new feature that if you just keep your, or they did have a new feature. All right, <laughs> stick with the box clicking. <laughs> Can't keep up with Zoom and all this technology stuff. All right, so, um, but please feel free to raise your hands and or write your questions in the chat. Back to you, Udo. Where can I find more information on fermented proteins like fermented eggs? I would, I would just go to Google for that fermented and re literally make it specific fermented eggs fermented fish fermented rabbits you know i i don't i don't know exactly what you find i didn't get it that way um part of it i got locally from traveling and part of it i got from different books that i've read uh you could look for books on fermented foods uh there's a bunch of them i uh so, but you so know let me, let me yeah. ask you it this way you and i yeah are going to Whole Foods together, right? Or or okay. other farmer's market type of store that you're like, yeah, this store is even better than Whole Foods. Yeah. Um, I prefer to actually go to Sprouts locally. Not every state has Sprouts, but yeah, we're going into a farmer's market type of store and we're like, Udo, let's, what are the best foods that we're going to pick up in the store? Like what is, what is going through your mind? What, what do you know that they're probably going to have on the shelves that's going to be a really good choice for us? And mm -hmm. what, and let's start with that. And then also okay. my, back are you talking question, about, it, are, go ahead. Are you talking about fermented foods? Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay. So I'm yes. going to, I'm going to you, uh, going with you to sprouts. And the yes. first thing I'm going to do is find somebody, find one of the people who works there and okay. say, where are your fermented foods? And when she takes me there, I'll say, 
which ones do you think are the best? Which ones are the most popular? Because the best may not be the most popular. And, uh, and then you have a, a place to start from. And I would figure out from that what I would buy. I, you can't go wrong on cabbage, right? Because it's so obvious. Kimchi, by the way, is uh, another one. Kimchi just uh, has, has quite a bit of cayenne in it. Um, and, and then I would just try them out. So I, you know, a, like... lot of, Go ahead. a lot Go of ahead. my habits come from trying things out. You know, I have this saying that, you know, there's one piece of advice your mother gave you that you shouldn't follow, which is don't play with your food. No, no, if you don't play with your food, I don't mean, I don't mean throw it at people and see if it sticks on the walls or say, but if you don't, if you don't change it out and try things and play with it and do it playfully, gee, I wonder what'll happen if, you know, how would you know what works best for your body if you only do what you're told and you don't ask your body what it wants to tell you? So the same and rules so that are the same rules that apply to all nutrition apply to fermented foods. And that is right. a variety. It's best to have a variety. It's best to not stay eating the same thing all the time, day in, day out. It's great. That's a great way, by the way, to build a, yeah. a food allergy. So like Patricia yeah. did that with eggs, for example, I kept telling her, Hey, don't have eggs in the morning and at night. You can't just keep having the same food all the time. Why, why, why I like eggs. And then eventually, Oh, eggs are giving me an allergy. Well, you know, and so now she has to back way off on eggs. So it's the same type of thing with fermented food as all food. We want a variety, we want a variety of colors. And of course, some people are not going to want to eat fermented rabbit, whereas you might eat uh, kimchi and fermented cabbage. So yeah. Okay. Great, great answer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's and then some of the cheeses, good. some of the cheeses are fermented as well, right? Yeah. But yeah. again, you know, there's an old way of doing it traditionally which has, which use my, uses microbes, which uses probiotics, but there are new ways of doing it with chemicals. And yes, so you have to make it distinct. You have to find out which is made with microorganisms and which ones are made chemically and do the microorganisms. So great questions to ask the, the highly knowledgeable uh, employee in the farmer's market store. Yeah. So, yeah, and some of those people are pretty awesome, actually. I've found some some of the farmers market, the top 10% of the employees can be really they're 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 working there because they feel a purpose and they're really into the food and the science and what's being brought to the store. And they can be a wealth yeah. of information. Yeah, and they even get feedback from their customers. So they're yeah. actually so they're actually close to like where the questions are being asked, tried out and answered. So yeah. very helpful. I agree. The Super Bifido Plus, I, I saw that is a Flora product. Flora is the company, F-L-O-R-A. And it's in the fridge, in the supplement section, in the natural food stores, along with the other six. Flora. So the company is Flora, correct? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's called Flora Manufacturing and Distributing. Okay. And then let's go on to uh what what one item to make the biggest difference for your health so that's that's the next question for you uh i would have to say i would have to say omega-3s made with health in mind simply because 99 percent of the population doesn't get enough for optimum health and it is required by every cell in the body um i i i yeah and then there's the, the worst thing for health, I would say frying. Because frying damages starches, damages proteins, damages fats. And each one of them, independent of the others, will increase inflammation and increase risk of cancer. So frying is the th most important thing to get rid of. Omega-3 is the most thing to bring in and optimize. Uh, but after oils, digestion is the second most neglected area causing the second most number of problems because if digestion works nothing much in your body is going to work for long so if, so central 
if you have no digestive issues, so another question from the chat, if you have no digestive issues and not taking antibiotics and occasionally eat fermented foods, can you have too much probiotics by taking additional supplements in pill form? No. No. You could, you could, be, you could be probiotics from stem to stern and it would not be a problem. And let's see another, I think the next question is, uh, which cheeses? So which cheeses? And, and then the second part of the question is yogurt probiotic. Yes, absolutely. Um, yep. But yeah, which, which cheeses? Well, the ones that are traditionally made. And sometimes you don't know. So you have to ask the people who, where you get them, that you get them from. And you have to build relationships with the people who can educate you honestly on what they're selling you, you know, and that's, you know, it's, that's the world we live in. And uh, next up, uh, we're going to bring Laura, another awesome VIP. Hello, Laura, good to see you. Hello. Hello. Can you Sorry, I got my Okay. Um, yeah, so one the one question they just asked about too many probiotics, that was one of my questions, but I have some more. Um, one of the things I didn't like about uh, kefir and some of those that, you know, you have to use sugar to ferment. And so they have like a residual amount of sugar. Is that an issue at all? Well, no, if, you, if the fermentation is complete, the sugar is all broken down into lactic acid but so you no, don't there's have no but, sugar left no but you don't have to <laughs> ferment with sugar we used to we used to get milk off the farm okay. so it was fresh milk we would mm -hmm. just let it sit on the counter and it would be it would ferment into yogurt we didn't put any sugar in okay so there's enough sugar in the milk so it's actually lactose right yeah and that's enough to that's enough to to make great yogurt and great sour cream. Okay. Yeah. And um, if people do have like some digestive distress with raw food, like say like raw cabbage, like a cabbage slaw with Udo's oil on top, um, <laughs> yeah. then does that mean they don't have enough good bacteria to break it down? Uh, I, I think there? because you're, I, you're, are you just prom promoting fermented raw foods? Or are you promoting all raw, raw foods? I, I, I eat all raw foods. I, I, they're not all fermented, but I think one of the, there's an issue that if you're used to cooked foods, mm -hmm. your digestive system becomes weak in terms of digesting raw food. So okay. what you do is you, when you want to make the change, you make it gradually. And it might take you six months to even a two years to go completely raw from cooked. But the other thing that you can do is if you're eating cooked foods, take, the, take enzymes to replace the enzymes that are present in raw foods, but are destroyed when the food is cooked. So when you cook food, you kill the probiotics on the food and you destroy the enzymes in the food. They mm -hmm. both should be replaced. So if you're having problems with digesting raw food, take some enzymes with it and see if that, if, see if that gets you benefit. Like, and my guess is- So when you're, when you're saying enzymes, are you talking about like digestive enzymes? Like, yeah. I mean, digestive bitters or, B, or stuff, BTA and HCL or something different? No, 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 no. I'm talking about digestive enzymes. I'm not of great, I'm not too fond of uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay. because it acidifies your body okay. when, you're, when your body makes hydrochloric acid it makes bicarbonate which ultimately balances it out when you just pump hydrochloric acid in your body you don't have that balancing factor and so i would take enzymes without betaine hydrochloride and only use betaine hydrochloride as a last resort if literally nothing is working and if i used it I would want to use it the shortest time possible. Okay. So digestive enzymes rich in protease is the most important. Bromelain and there's all kinds of different fungal 
protease enzymes you can get and bacterial protease enzymes. Uh, they're, they're, and the, the plant-based enzymes are more effective than the animal-based digestive enzymes. Um, All right, so um, back in 2019, um, so a few years ago, I had, I guess it was a stool sample, but um, it showed that I had a lot of the, the bacteria that you're talking about. And so she, because I already had a lot, she didn't think that would be the best choice of supplementation for me. So now I'm curious because you said you can't take too many. And yeah. you also said they work in community. So you want a variety. So if I already have, a, even though I'm old enough to have I'm of the age where that could be depleted based on what you said. Yeah, um, so I'm now yeah. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, when, when a person says you have enough bifida bacteria in your digestive tract, they usually are looking for a deficiency that will cause you problems. And when you don't have a deficiency, then they say, oh, you're good. But if you don't have a deficiency, does not automatically mean that you're, you have optimum. And that's, again, is something that you can try out and see if it makes a difference. Because if, if it makes a difference, you might feel better. You might have more energy. Something might slide a little better. I, you know, yeah. I have, so, the most trouble, I have the most trouble seeing if things make a difference because I'm mostly healthy. And so almost every yeah. time I try something, it's like I, well, yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. I'm like that too, but there, mm -hmm. there are certain things that I've taken that I've noticed the difference. Okay. Well, we'll see yeah. what happens. I'll, yeah. I'll let Robbie know. All right. I think yeah. that's all for my questions for today. Thanks. Great questions. Lots of love to you, Laura. And let's go on to a couple of the chat questions and then we're going to take two more VIP questions here and then we're going to close out the show for today. So let's uh, let's clean up on some of the questions here in chat. So one of the questions is, is there a risk of SIBO if you supplement too much and what would cause SIBO? Huh. So no, probiotics don't give you SIBO unfriendly bacteria give you SIBO. So the more friendly bacteria you get, the less likely you, you are to have SIBO. And if you have SIBO, probiotics might even help make it go away. And so, next, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> and what would it be best to take the prebiotic with probiotic? not not it's not required that you take them at exactly the same time you, you basically get your prebiotics from eating plants and no matter what your diet is plants should be part of your diet and then as that churns its way through your digestive tract and things get broken down the prebiotic fiber becomes available to the probiotics throughout your digestive tract because both the fiber and the probiotics are, are supposedly supposed to be throughout your digestive tract, right? You even have fiber in your stool. So that doesn't eat, all get eaten by the, by the probiotics. Uh, but, but the only thing is that animal products don't have prebiotics in them. So you have to, get, you have to eat plants to get your probiotics, your prebiotics, your fiber. So it's just important that you're getting enough, not necessarily that they're taken right. together, the, but that the prebiotics are going through the system on a regular basis, cleaning out excess cholesterol, providing Correct. the probiotics the food they need, but not necessarily do they have to go together. Correct. But in nature, going back to how was it in nature before we, you know, before we got civilized, so-called civilized, right? In nature, you would have eaten the plant and there would have been fiber in the plant and there would have been probiotics on the plant most of the time. So in nature, you would have got them together, but it, that's not, that just happens to be true. 
but it's not like you gotta you gotta be you know you gotta make sure that you get them all exactly at the same time not like that um, next question in the absence of issues or in other words symptoms how do you diagnose the dysbiosis of your microbiome uh, you can take stool samples and measure the the bifida bacteria in it um that would probably be the, companies yeah there's some good companies online that you can find to actually do that or talk to your doctor if not all doctors yeah. are super up on health optimization um, depending yeah. on what type of doctor you see there can right. often be more disease uh disease treatment but uh but yeah you might, you, you might do better with a naturopath for some of these questions 100 percent, i yep. agree or even a nutritionist. And and what would you say for how do you validate recovery once a plan has begun? Optimization of your uh, optimization of your numbers and what your reports are saying and if you have symptoms the symptoms going away would you what anything yeah. you would add to that? Thank okay. you. Thank you for answering the question for me. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> you pretty much said it word for word like I would have said it. <laughs> I'm trying to keep us efficient here. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. And another VIP asks, uh, how about steamed vegetables? Steamed vegetables, you kill the probiotics. If there were any on them in the first place, that's not a guarantee. Um, uh, it's, it's, better, it's better than cooking it. The less heat, the better, but raw would be better uh, long-term as long as you worked your way up to it. I eat mostly raw foods and they work really well for me. And I didn't, I wasn't always plant-based. I'm mostly plant-based now and I'm just doing it from my feel. I don't go to doctors to measure stool samples and all of that. I do it by how I feel. And I notice some things give me more energy and some things don't. And uh, so I, I'm pretty, but that means I also do a stillness practice where I actually sit still and get in touch with what it feels like to be alive. And in, the, in that stillness, you notice things that might not be obvious if you're racing around getting mm. stuff done. A hundred percent. Oh, that's so powerful. It's so powerful. That's what is such a big portion of our, our phase one system for our VIPs. And they, they're, they, you know, they have pain, stiffness, other types of, of mechanical issues with, without symptoms. And the number one thing is to really get in touch with your body, not just the mechanics, but to connect. And what is your body yeah. doing? How are you feeling? And be still with the process. It's yeah. very interesting because so many people are so like they have so many thoughts in their head about what they need to do. And they have thoughts about self doubts and self concept. And it's like, we got to clean all that out and find that quiet place and connect with yourself and have gratitude yeah. for where you're at at the moment and yeah. then start working from there you're going to have like 10 times the result so you, I love you know that. yeah you know self self doubt only exists in your cortex but there's no self doubt <laughs> in your kneecap or your toes That's or right. your bum on the chair or yes, anywhere sir. else in your body there's just peace unconditional love inspiration energy light beautiful sound feeling, you know, and then if you sit in that, if you sit in that, the space your body occupies and you experience that in stillness, oh my God, <laughs> what a gift to be alive. Oh my God. I am more than good enough. Oh my God. Yeah. I've said stupid things and yeah, I've done stupid things, but oh my God, life is unbelievably beautiful and totally forgiving. Yes. I agree with you. Uh, next question. Do you feel that uh, adding a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to your drinking water is a healthy practice a day? Oh, yeah. If, ap if apple cider vinegar is made the traditional way, it's got probiotics in it. But apple cider vinegar, yeah, a couple tablespoons a day, um, preferably in the morning. It's actually quite nice. If you someone's get it, to... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you can get it. You can get it with all kinds of flavors now. The same company, Flora, sells apple cider vinegar with turmeric in it and, and, uh, and uh, a number of different, um, let's see, ginger and, and uh, 
lemon and so they make it they make it and it's a nice it's a really nice drink so i have a bottle in my fridge and every once in a while i go in there and just glug 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 and put it back in the fridge <laughs> what's your thoughts on cam kombucha like kombucha fermented teas yeah um i didn't do well with it uh, when i started i got diarrhea mm. and so i kind of backed off of it so i have never gone back to it i've drank well i've drank it a little bit here and there uh yeah. without any problem but there are some people and this is like i don't argue with results i know some people who have who say they've got great results with kombucha so i i will never argue with that yeah. and and it just probably like everything else you know works better for some people than for others yeah. the issue is what works for you what works for me is what I need to know and what works for you, you need to know. And some of that is experimental. You try it out. Maybe yeah. you don't like the taste or maybe it just you get a different reaction and say, nah, I don't think that's for me. Yeah, and, yeah. and just because some is good, right, for, for everyone, just because some is good doesn't mean more is better, right? That too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I per, I'm personally a kombucha drinker, but I yeah. use that rule that I just shared. It's not in excess it's yeah a few times a week and i do exactly what you said about being still and listening to your body uh yeah. what what vegetables so if someone's going to start journeying in the in the eating more raw vegetables um any any of the top of the mind that you would uh recommend i'm i'm a complete addict to to uh broccoli I love cabbage. I grew up on cabbage. So because we were lived on a farm and cabbage is really easy to grow. So we had lots of cabbage, carrots, radishes, arugula, all the green stuff, um, parsley. Uh, and I use lots of spices too, herbs and spices. Anything, anything green, if it's not specifically poisonous, is probably good for you. Uh, you know, so there are lots of choices. I mean, you go out, go around the outside aisle in the store, pretty much whatever is there, green and green and yellow and red peppers. Um, but, but my, my go-to, my number one go-to is broccoli. And I, I, I make tahini. I get tahini, organic tahini, uh, um, sesame, you know, ground up sesame, dump the tahini oil, put my oil on it because my oil is a better oil. And then I put a whole bunch of spices in it. Cayenne, ginger, cumin, um, cinnamon, uh, matcha, um, black seed, clove, amla, curry, turmeric. So I let put all, all those spices together. And then maybe I'll put in some creatine too. And, uh, and uh, sometimes I put in a little taurine, maybe a little glycine. So I put all of that in, mix it up. And then I dip my broccoli in it or carrots in it or radishes in it, or that's how I eat. I'm a, I'm sort of uncivilized about eating. I'm not the, you know, I'm not the fork is on the right and the other fork is on the top. And yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I don't, I come from a farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, I have a Brazilian wife and Brazil, Brazilians are very proper with the way they eat. Like, yeah, even, even a sandwich, they like have fork and knife. And it's, it's very, as, as an American, yeah, yeah. it's very interesting to me. Yeah, to, and it's, and it's beautiful yeah. in its own way, but I, I just don't, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I keep it really simple. No dishes, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but I'm always playing with stuff. I'm always trying stuff out. You know, right now I'm doing quite, I'm taking quite a bit of uh, niacin. Mm. I haven't done that for a long time. And mm. niacin is very good for health, uh, very good for brain function good for energy as you get older because it's it's part of the the mitochondrial energy production system 
and uh, but I I take all kinds of stuff. I zinc, uh, quercetin, vitamin D. I'm taking ten thousand units of vitamin D a day. I also run around in the sunshine with my shirt off. Uh, you take a Co CoQ10 or ubiquinol? I, I do sometimes. I'm not taking it right now, but I, I'm definitely a friend of uh, ubiquinol, especially for people who have heart failure, direct, yeah. you know, have issues in the direction of heart failure. Yeah, it's a, it's a great one for mitochondrial health too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And, we're going yeah, to so. we're going to go to two final questions here. We're going to go to Lena, and then we're going to go back to Teresa, both VIPs. And uh, while you're answering their questions, um, actually, a couple of questions came in from Teresa, so I'll let you do those live. And then yeah. uh, questions that come in the chat, um, I'll answer the last couple we had here, and then we'll close out. Okay, so right. Lena, hello, and big warm virtual hug, and welcome to you. Good to see you. This has been just wonderful. And I'm sitting on the edge of my seat because I've got to get to the health food store before seven o'clock. So um, I have heard something about fulvic, is it acid? I don't know what this is. And so yeah. that was my first question. Yeah, fulvic acid is uh, is partially, uh, like when when, you go in a swamp and there's a lot of organic matter and that organic matter is in an acidic environment and it's go on the way to being recycled. Fulvic acids are, are a partial breakdown product of, of uh, plant tissue. They're, they're a little bit acidic and they have antioxidant properties. Mm. So, uh, they, they can be helpful. Again, some people, I have never noticed that they've done a lot for me. I take them once in a while just because I know what they are. Right. Right. So I take them because I know what they are, but, uh, but some people have gotten very, very noticeable results from them. Okay. Um, thank you. And then um, I read somewhere but that a probiotic should be taken on an empty stomach, but some of what you said it sort of contradicts that. And I just wondered when you brush your teeth with your probiotic, mm -hmm. has it been several hours since you ate? Yeah. So, so when you use human adapted probiotics, you can take mm -hmm. them before, during, or after meals. Okay. The, the people who said take them before meals on an empty stomach, I can tell you this is a marketing position. This is not a science position. And what they was used to say when you asked them why, they said, because when you take them with a glass of water, they hide behind the water and won't get killed by stomach acid. But you know, <laughs> when you know, when you understand how digestion works, when you put stuff in your stomach, that triggers acid release. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not sitting around with a stomach full of acid all the time. The acid is in vesicles in the cells that line the stomach. So then you throw some food in there and that triggers the release of the stomach acid. Well, if you throw probiotics in there, that will, that will trigger release of some stomach acid. So then they say, okay, well take it with food because the stomach acid will be lower because it's diluted with food. And then some people say, no, no, no take it at the end of the meal because then the most stomach acid will have been used up in digesting the food. When you take human adapted, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, good. All right. I'm, I'm off to find flora. Um, and I've got my answer to enzymes, probiotics. Oh, what about detoxing? Uh, what about it? The body is a detox, has a detox mechanism and you detox in five ways. One is through your digestive tract as the lining of your digestive tract sheds because it gets re rebuilt every four days. So it's turning over all the time. Toxins can go out with that tissue. You can, so that's one. Number two is your kidneys. So that's for water soluble toxins. Number three is your lungs. That's for volatile toxins. Then your liver, which will uh, detoxify some 
substance is then sent them out into your toilet through your gut and then skin sweating. And when you sweat, water soluble mm. toxins will come out of your body in the, in the water part of your sweat. And if you want to get rid of oil soluble, soluble toxins, then you can drive them with oils that they got to be made with health in mind, especially with omega threes, because they tend to drift towards the skin. And then you can sweat out oil soluble toxins and they'll come out of your body in this oil part of your sweat. I, that comes from studies done with Agent Orange, which is oil soluble and super toxic. Okay. And they put them in a sauna for 15 to 30 minutes every day for three to six months. And they measured the, the Agent Orange in the oil part of the sweat and they monitored its decrease in the body. So Amazing. great studies done. Uh, and, and probably the best, the worst toxins are oil soluble and mm -hmm. hardest to get rid of, but oil and driving them with oil means you take more oil and you literally drive them out through your skin. Interesting. So sauna and oil, but read your book on oil so we know what is yeah. the right oh, oil. And, and some people give you niacin on top of that. Oh, nice. Because niacin opens up your capillaries and that, that they, they say makes it even easier to get rid of these oil soluble toxins. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Great questions, Lena. Good to yeah, see great. you. Honestly, I love these questions because they're so good. <laughs> and we had one more question here from a VIP, Patricia. Um, it, before we go to Teresa, just really quick, I want to make sure her answer, her question got answered. I have an elderly relative who is diagnosed with cancer. What do you recommend would be the best thing to do to strengthen their immune system to withstand the treatment? Okay, so cancer, in my understanding, is always a disease of toxicity. So what we just said about detox applies to the extent that you can practice that on somebody depending on what stage they're at in the cancer so detox <clears throat> and then i would use enzymes because they take a load off your immune system because they help to digest the foods and if your foods are not getting digested properly then the immune system has to get involved which then ties it up in digestion and makes it less able to deal with the cancer so so digestive enzymes, probiotics, more plant-based, less animal-based, organic, you know, and then whatever junk, whatever junk, no junk, no sugar. Sugar loves cancer cells. So no sugar, no white flour, no fried foods. Fry, frying increases inflammation and cancer risk. And basically, if you as close as you can get to fresh, whole, raw, organic, plant-based, is the direction you want to go in. Add probiotics, add fiber, add digestive enzymes, and uh, add bitters. And if you can find alkaline water, that's also very helpful because cancer seems to always be a disease of acidification as well as toxicity. And which, so digest the, which, which digestive, digestive enzyme? Yeah. Well, the one I work with is, uh, is called um, advanced adult digestive enzyme that's a flora product too i like floras they have very high quality products um and it's one that i actually had a part in formulating advanced adult advanced uh, adult digestive enzyme blend awesome i'm writing that in the chat for all yeah and that those. one you find on the shelf not it because enzymes don't need refrigeration probiotics need refrigerations, enzymes don't. And enzymes are just molecules. They'll break down the proteins for you. They're high in proteins because proteins cause most of the digestive problems when digestion isn't working because they're and, foreign material. And last question here from Avia. Uh, what is the best solution for IBS-C in your opinion? Well, the people say it's autoimmune. I would again go very high on very high on enzymes because the more you can break down proteins and uh, if they're foreign proteins your immune system will take care of it as well 
So I would go that way plus probiotics. In a way, the, in the digestive system, I would go pretty much go in the same direction. Always those four, digestive enzymes, probiotics, fiber or prebiotics and, uh, and bitters for, for, to, to optimize the ease of digestion and take a load off both your digestive system and your immune system. And then the oil increases energy, omega-3s, if they're made with health in mind, increase energy. And that means uh, you, use, you use those as your fuel because starches turn into sugars and cancer like sugar and cancer does not work well on omega-3s or on fats in general. Greens till they're coming out of your ears. And to close out, we're going to bring up Teresa Duran again. Hello and welcome. Hello. Okay, I'm going to make this very quick. Um, number one, air frying, an option, yes or no? If you turn the food brown, you're burning it. If you burn the food, you increase inflammation and cancer. Okay. Um, Oil, um, your Udo's oil 369 with or without DHA? Ah, uh, the, I take it without, I'm 81. The, there's research that if you're on the usual American diet, uh, then after 50, your brain starts to shrink. But I don't think that's because you need DHA. And, and then if you take DHA, that seems to slow it down. But I don't think the brain is shrinking because of lack of DHA, the brain is shrinking because you're eating garbage. So I don't, I, and I'm kind of, I want to prove that my brain doesn't shrink just because I'm over 50, but I'm also living, doing what I can to live in line with nature and my nature. So uh, it makes a difference. But if you're 1% off when you're 10, and then you go like that for 50 years, it's going to be a pretty, pretty big, uh, disease inviting gap that you've created in those in those 30 years so don't do that you know do the do what you can ask yourself not what can i get away with ask what do i need to do to have the longest happiest healthiest most productive life that is possible for me to have given my genetics and given my situation awesome thank you yeah. protein um you're mainly a vegetarian what are your proteins that you're taking and, and how much are you, are you suggesting? <laughs> my, 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 my son is a fitness trainer. He has his own train, his own protein. It's a, it's a, uh, whey protein and it's made in a certain way. I don't use it much. I use it sometimes. All foods, if they're all whole foods have protein in them. If the more you work out, the more you will feel like eating high, higher protein foods. But seeds and nuts have a lot of protein in them too. So I don't pay attention to protein, but I'm not, I'm, you know, I have a, I have a mini trampoline and I do have a chinning bar and I go for walks and sometimes I run a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm active, but I'm not pushing fitness or muscle building. I'm not pushing any of that. I like to be in shape. You know, if I, if I'm, if I'm lazy, I don't feel good. So I do enough exercise to keep body and soul together uh, because I, I want to feel good and, and, and it's important to be active, to be healthy. So I don't personally have a, so I don't eat eggs. I don't eat meat. I don't eat cheese. Um, uh, I get most of my proteins, I would say, comes from the seeds and nuts, tahini, and uh, I eat all kinds of seeds and nuts. So that's, that's where I get the proteins from. I don't even eat uh, lentils and beans and peas and chickpeas uh, because I, they, I, I don't feel that good on them. And they have too much, too much starch for me. I, I can gain weight very easily. So I'm more on a, I, I head more in the direction of keto than, than of high carb diets. 
And okay. I also like that they stabilize uh, insulin and uh, they don't, uh, they, they suppress appetite. So you don't get the cravings. I don't get the cravings that I used to get on carbs that lead to overeating that then leads to overweight because the excess carbs turn into fat. Okay, thank you. Um, niacin, um, I remember taking it once and I remember getting like an inchy head and it like just this awful feeling. Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, niacin causes a flush. You could take it in, in the form of niacinamide, which does not. You could take it in the source of inositol hexaniacinate, which does not cause a flush. The, they are pretty much interchangeable, except by price. I think niacin is the cheapest. Uh, but the one thing that the others don't do that niacin does, it it balances your blood lipids and, and your diabetic and cardiovascular factors. And the flush is part of it. And I have come to enjoy the flush. Yeah. And there's a guy, I take about 600 milligrams a day. I get a flush on 50. So what I do is I take it over the course of the day. And the guy who did most of the work on it, uh, Abram Hoffer, he used to take 3,000 milligrams with uh, three grams of vitamin C. They're very powerful antioxidants, so they're very powerfully anti-inflammatory as well. And he, he give it to schizophrenics. They don't flush even on 3,000 milligrams. And he gave them as much as 12,000 milligrams a day because they're niacin dependent. And the way he would, basically he said a cure of schizophrenia is that the schizophrenic is able to get along with his family and is paying taxes because they often, they're often they often completely dysfunctional. And the niacin, for some reason, when they get that much niacin, their brains works. Used it in bipolar as well, even in anxiety and depression. And uh, so there's a, there's a book called Niacin, the True Story or Niacin, the Real Story. It's a very good book if you're the reading type. It just came out this year. And, uh, Abram Hoffer started writing that, uh, but he died before he finished it. So somebody helped get it finished, and it just came out this year. It's a great book. Wow. Uh, lots wow, of that's, good information. That's amazing. And, it's been, and it hasn't, like niacin hasn't made it out into the, into the public like omega-3s did or, or like probiotics have done. But, uh, but it's super, super beneficial to health. Okay, last question. Magni, um, we had a great presentation Friday on the muscles, tendons, joints, cartilage. And um, we talked a little bit about calcium. Uh, I'm at, my question is on magnesium and what form, when during the day, is it in the morning, is it at night, and how much? Okay, so magnesium... Um, uh, about 80%, last time I looked, 80% of the population doesn't get enough magnesium. And probably if you're looking at optimum amounts, it's probably closer to 90%. So magnesium, any type works. If your body needs, needs magnesium, then it will do its best to get it. The best form, the best form considered, but also the most expensive is uh, bisglycinate, bisglycinate, right? So it's magnesium with glycine. It's an amino acid, right? Uh, but I also have one that is uh, magnesium citrate. I have one that has, has magnesium, uh, uh, has like five or six different magnesium salts. They all work. The one that, that's, that I think the best, you know, and then there's liquid magnesium that uh, seems to be, I think it's a lactonate. And that's absorbed the best because it's already in, 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 uh, um, in liquid form. But this, even if you took magnesium carbonate, which is like the, the least happy form, like calcium carbonate, well, in your stomach, it will turn into calcium chloride or magnesium chloride. And those are well absorbed much better than calcium carbonate. So there's a lot of, so it's not as critical. 
It's critical that you, you optimize them. It's not as critical which form you take. And the time of day? Time of day, uh, I take it. I take it just once a day. And you know that if you take too much, you get diarrhea because it doesn't, it isn't absorbed. If you take more than you need, then it stays in your digestive tract and it pulls water in it. So you get loose stools. Same thing happens with vitamin C. If you take like more than three grams or six grams or whatever. Uh, I don't, I, I take it any time of day. It's not critical. And you, all your, all your whole foods, as well as meat, are good sources of magnesium. Excellent. So, Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Teresa. Wonderful questions. Yeah, and great add value, questions. Add a great value to the Q&A. So that is a wrap. We truly enjoyed connecting with you. And before you go, before you sign off, I would like to give Udo a very warm welcome. So Patricia, if you'd please help me, we're going to enable everyone to unmute. So please go ahead and unmute yourself and um, share whatever you would like to share about gratitude, which will be a great way for us to connect and close out this great session. And before we do that, we're going to do that in a second. But Patricia is going to drop a link in the chat for you uh, right now. And all of our VIPs, you know exactly what this is all about. And that's the full body fix. It's coming up November 4th. So for VIPs, please, we're going to send you emails and make it impossible for you not to get the link later. But uh, the full body fix is a free event. And we do a tremendous amount of training for a whole week, totally free. So please share that with uh, your friends and family, those you care about most VIPs. And for other audience members, I will give you my warm welcome to attend and join that event with us. And even if you've come before, there's much more to learn. So uh, that link is in the chat for you now. And after we do this uh, gratitudes together, we'll keep the, keep the meeting open for several minutes so you can look at links. Okay, ready? Here we go. Let's unmute and let's share our gratitudes. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, you know. Thank you. 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 A link to buy the oil, get it in the health food stores. No, I'm in Europe. I can't get it over here. And it's a where, are you, where are you? Southern France. Okay, go to go to the internet Udo's Choice, U D O S Choice, and then look for distributors. Uh, there, okay. UK has one, Belgium has one, Holland has one. Uh, France doesn't have one because they don't allow oils in because they are. They have some very antiquated, wrong information in their government. So you might help them fix that. And it's also I Ireland. From Great Britain. Yeah, you UK can you can find it in in UK. Thank cool. you so very much, Udo. You're wonderful. Uh, thank <laughs> you. You know what? This is a, one of the best parties I've had for a long time. No, you really know how to do it. I I love how yes, you do sir. this. Yes, yeah. sir. And yes, I love sir. that. I love that you agree that love is more important than vegetables. Yes. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that line. Yes. <laughs> it is so true. <laughs> yeah. Lots of love, everyone. Make it a wonderful right. weekend. And we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you.